want to show you three areas in which this is very, very uh, powerfully demonstrated by the Scripture. First of all, God has given to you and me an even greater revelation of His glory, of the glory of Christ, than He gave to these three apostles on the Mount of Transfiguration. You said that was marvelous. The Lord has given you and I a greater revelation. You say, what could be more glorious than seeing the glory, kind of glory of the Father shine through the Son? Jesus looked like a blazing sun. What could be more glorious than hear the audible voice of the Father? God has given Paul a revelation about a great mystery that's never been understood till the cross. And God gave it to Paul that it's not Christ walking among us now. It's not one blaze of glory, just one glimpse on a mountain. But that glorified man is in heaven now. He's at the right hand of the Father. And he has inherited the glory. He has the full glory. The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in him. And now, he does not just dwell among us. He lives in us. The glory of the Lord is in us. For he possesses that glory. That means that you carry the glory of Jesus wherever you go. The glory of the Lord abides. What is the glory of God? It's Jesus manifest. Jesus is the glory. Hallelujah. The presence of God's glory changed the very appearance of Jesus' face and also his clothing. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different. And his clothing became white and glistening, gleaming. His face actually changed. Can you imagine, my friend, what that must have been like for those apostles to see the face of Jesus change? Can you imagine any picture of more peace, more glory, because he was with his Father, and the Shekinah glory was upon him, and his face changed, his very raiment was sparkling and glistening, white as bright as the sun? What expectancy on the face of Jesus, what glory, his Father's presence manifested in and through him? But let me talk about your face and mine. I want to talk about your everyday face. I'm not talking about your Sunday face. Even his clothes were changed. That means character. That represents behavior. And you can't talk about reaching unsafe loved ones. You can't talk about reaching the world until you talk about God's power in your everyday living and on the job. See, we're not approaching our everyday life with the trust and confidence he wants us to have in him. All right, secondly, the Lord has given power to overcome everyday problems. There is power in Jesus Christ to conquer every problem that faces you Sunday through Sunday. All in between it. Verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place that shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible for you. I want God to make this very clear that the Lord's not looking for a church of mystical experiences. I don't want to hear dreams. I don't want to hear revelations. I want to hear people say, the Lord was with me all week. The Lord saw me through problems that looked impossible. The Lord met me on the job. I witnessed on the job. They saw Jesus in me on the job. Christ in me means that he has all power. If he abides in me, that power is at my disposal. He said, you shall speak to the mountain and it shall remove, it shall be gone. And you see often we face a crisis on the job or during the week in our home and we go crazy, we fall apart. You know what you're saying to the whole world and to every demon in hell? I say to the world that I have Jesus abiding in me and yet you ignore his power and his glory. You don't call on him, you don't trust him to see you through it. Jesus, he takes his temper to the Lord Jesus and the Lord cools his temper. He takes his anger against his mates and those around him, his depression, his hurt feelings. What kind of a testimony is this that you do not practice his presence? You don't believe he can meet you every day of your life. But let me tell you what I believe is a true deliverance church. It's a church whose whole body is out there seven days a week living Jesus, practicing Jesus, where everybody knows, I don't know where they go to church, I don't know what kind of message they're leaning on, but there's some kind of strength and there's something there keeping them, exalting them above, lifting them above the problems. They go through the same thing, but they react differently. They don't come apart. Those people are rooted and grounded in something. They're convinced that Jesus loves them. Now finally, Jesus abides in us 
because I believe he's interested in every little detail of our human experience. Before we were born, he had a book and he numbered our parts, the scripture says. We were called from the foundation of the world. He numbered every hair on our head. We have a Savior who abides in us and he wants to live in us because he's interested in every little detail.